It was a foggy night in the heart of Tokyo, where the glow of neon lights couldn't dispel the chilling atmosphere that lingered in the air. I had always been fascinated by the supernatural, and Japan's rich tapestry of urban legends was an irresistible invitation to explore the unknown. Venturing into the labyrinthine back streets, I stumbled upon an obscure arcade, its outdated sign flickering ominously. The locals spoke in hushed tones about an ancient arcade game tucked away in the darkest corner, a game known as Kurohara's Lament. Rumors surrounded the curse game, and those who dared to play it were said to invite a malevolent spirit into their lives. The legend spoke of a ghostly figure, Kurohara, who sought vengeance against the living. Intrigued and fueled by a morbid curiosity, I decided to uncover the truth behind the whispers. The arcade was deserted, with only the eerie hum of flickering lights as my companion. The air grew colder as I approached the neglected game cabinet. Dust clung to the machine, and a faded image of Kurohara adorned the marquee, his spectral eyes seemingly following my every move. Inserting a coin, the screen flickered to life with an ominous glow. The game's pixelated landscape unfolded, revealing a desolate town enveloped in perpetual darkness. I controlled a solitary figure navigating the haunted streets, the sound of distant footsteps echoing through the arcade. As I delved deeper into the game, a sense of dread consumed me. Strange occurrences mirrored the legends, whispers of revenge, ghostly apparitions, and a haunting melody that seemed to emanate from the pixelated world into the arcade itself. Terrifying visions flashed on the screen, Kurohara's tormented soul seeking retribution. The game had transcended the digital realm, intertwining with reality. Shadows danced across the arcade, and the once muted whispers grew into guttural wails that reverberated through the desolate space. In a panic, I frantically pressed the joystick, trying to escape the nightmarish game. But the virtual nightmare had become a tangible horror. The room plunged into darkness and an icy grip wrapped around me. I was no longer a mere player. I had become a pawn in Kurohara's twisted game. The air thickened with an otherworldly presence. Kurohara materialized before me, his spectral visage contorted in agony. The arcade's flickering lights revealed the anguish etched into his ghostly features. Frozen in terror, I could feel the weight of the curse settling over me. Kurohara's vengeful gaze pierced through my soul, and as the haunting melody reached a crescendo, the world around me blurred. When I awoke, I found myself outside the arcade, the night air heavy with an unnatural stillness. The once foggy streets were now clear, but the lingering terror remained. The legend of Kurohara had transcended the arcade, leaving me haunted by an encounter that defied reason. As I walked away, the distant sound of footsteps echoed behind me, a chilling reminder that some urban legends are best left undisturbed in the shadowy corners of Tokyo's haunted streets. It was one of those nights at the Southern Airport. You know, the ones where the usual airport chaos takes a dark turn. Overhead announcements, hurried footsteps, and the low murmur of conversations created the perfect backdrop for the weirdness that was about to unfold. I slumped into a cold, uncomfortable airport chair, tired after a long day as a TV journalist. Figured I'd take a breather in the waiting lounge Little did I know, this was no ordinary layover. The restroom was dimly lit, and as I washed my hands, a sound caught my attention. The flush of a toilet. Spooked, I pushed open the door, expecting to catch someone in the act. 
but the bathroom was empty, the door swinging mysteriously on its own. Weird vibes, right? The bizarre drama continued in the waiting lounge. A girl screamed as she darted past me, terror etched on her face. I looked around for reactions, but it seemed like only I could see her. She was trapped in some twisted loop, disappearing and reappearing with the same horrified expression. Trying to unravel the mystery, I found a folded tissue paper on a nearby table. It held a hastily scrawled number and a cryptic help me. Dialing the number unleashed an otherworldly melody echoing from the surroundings. It guided me to a trash can, and just as I reached out, the coffee shop worker, the same one who gave me change earlier, touched my shoulder. Undeterred, I redialed the mysterious number. The haunting melody led me to an unassuming desk, and the disembodied voice continued its eerie tale. The coffee shop worker's touch returned, like some puppeteer pulling the strings. With trepidation, I pressed on. Phantom phone calls, unexplained sounds, and a bizarre encounter with a lark in the men's washroom intensified the surreal vibe. But the real horror waited in the restroom. The lark made a hurried entrance, disappearing inside, and the air got heavy. Staring into the restroom mirror, I saw a shadowy figure, featureless and moving on its own. Lights flickered, and a distant whisper pleaded for help. I stumbled back, heart racing, and escaped the bizarre scene. The haunting incidents unfolded like a nightmarish symphony. Back in the waiting lounge, I spilled my guts to a fellow traveler named Sushi. Her skepticism turned to contemplation, mirroring the uncertainty in my own mind. The airport continued its enigmatic performance, blurring the line between reality and the supernatural. I couldn't shake the feeling that I'd stepped into a realm where the known and the unexplained intertwined. The southern airport had become a stage for an unsettling tale, and I was stuck in a nightmare that defied explanation.